This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. So today, Mel, you return, don't ya? Hey Mel from Purse on Fleek. Ah, oh, girl, you got a new baglet. I see you have a cocoa handle, super cute. Um, so today we're gonna be talking Purse on Fleek. And I mean, um, yes, more Purse on Fleek drama, Chanel edition. So Mel, I'm gonna see you in just a minute. Thank you for popping by. You look gorgeous, by the way. So guys, um, huh? We're gonna be talking Person Fleek and Chanel today for a change, because usually it's always kind of drama connected to Hermes. Before we get to the details and the nitty gritty of it all, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube if you like my content. Thumb up this video. And uh, you can even push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, gain access to extra perks there as well. On Patreon, I'm Super Jacob, all spelled together. Thank you to all my patrons and members who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live, so I have my co-chators in the chats right now. Um, you can partake in every live stream I do. Everybody's invited. The live streams are every Saturday and they happen live. That's where all the chats happen as well. So this video is being filmed live in front of everybody here. So you guys, Mel from Purse on Fleek. Now, uh, Mel made a video, a new video called, the title of the video is New Chanel Bag. But I ruined it already. Unboxing Spring Summer 21S slash 21P. So Mel delivers the drama with the concept of this video because we're we're seeing what two things. I got a new bag, but I already ruined it, which of course makes you prompts you to click on the video immediately because you want to know oh, was the bag ruined because the production wasn't right? Was it flawed? Did she realize that there was a mistake while unboxing it? Because as you know, you could check out my unboxing. I'll post a video up above of um, the latest drama connected to my Chanel bags was the uh, foldable spring summer 21 tote. Check it out. So we know that Chanel, you know, has its flaws, but she did state that she ruined it. So it makes one think, what did she do to the bag? Did she do anything to the bag? What ha happened? So, of course, we click on the video. We check it out. We prepare the crop because we think, what is going down? So we're all ready for it. The popcorn is ready. The video begins. And Mel shows us. Let me bring you back in. Mel, come back in, darling. Ah, there you is. So, Mel is showing us uh, the, the cocoa handle in this beige color. She starts describing it. It was a weird unboxing because it's not like we have the bag, opening the bag, I'm taking the box out. It was just like, hey, unconventional, this is the box, opened it. It almost felt like she already opened it before or I don't know, it didn't feel like it came from the boutique. But she said it came from the boutique. She bought it in the boutique. It wasn't secondhand. Uh, she said she's developing a good relationship with the sales associate. At that point, I started thinking, oh boy. And uh, so she's unboxing the bag, she's describing, and, and she's going for the colors, just like she did with the Hermes bag. Like, she's very particular now about the leather, how the leather is made, how Chanel produces caviar leather in particular, and how the color looks like in different light environments. It's more beige in some lights, more peachy in other lights, neutral uh, color, as she describes it. And she does show it photographed under different lights and says, look, it changes color according to the light. So that was interesting to see. She's very specific. about. I love that she's specific about that because it shows me that she actually really does care. However, one thing that was an alarm sign for me, she's she's kind of talking a lot about the sales associate. I'm like, Mel, don't end up like with the Hermes sales associate. Because she's, she went and started talking about, hey, you guys, why didn't I realize before that certain bags like the Chanel Mini, rectangular or square, or bags like that, I did know that they have such a great price on the aftermarket. I've seen some of these bags 
on the aftermarket cost more than they do new in the boutique. Why didn't I jump on this bandwagon before when these bags cost less? And I'm like, oh my God, are you not speculating about resale value of these bags on your... Again? After all we've been through, Mel? <laughs> After all? Like, <laughs> oh my God. You survive everything. It's incredible. Um, it, it's like nothing. <laughs> it's like all the stuff we've been through. <laughs> and I know, Mad out. Let's go back to, hmm... I'm going to start buying these bags to resell them at a profit. Ka-ching! That's exactly what transpired to the video. And I'm like, oh my God, girl. And we're not even at the point where she says she ruined the bag. And I'm already like <laughs> chewing my fingers, my nails, thinking, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> we're, we're driving towards disaster again. Because I'm just envisioning Hermes drama chanel style you know but then I, but then i thought to myself well chanel really produces a lot of these baglets they're not quota bags if you got the money they'll sell you the minis you know they're you know sure particular colors of the minis that they consider unicorns uh going to be difficult to get but you know cocoa handles and stuff like that they're they have them readily available so if your sales associate wants to uh, permit you to buy more than what you're allowed to buy every two months in terms of bags and small leather goods. Go for it, you know? But still, I was like, oh gosh, there she goes again, talking in her video about investment. She should have bought these bags sooner because aftermarket has the up to price. I'm like, oh... No, why? We never learn from our mistakes. History repeating. And at that point, she cuts the video. So by the way, she looks lovely. Again, I think Mel looks really beautiful with the makeup, with the sweater. I don't know where that sweater is from, though. That is a question mark for me. But anyway, so, uh, and then she says, oh, and then she cuts off to another day where she filmed. So it's not the same video. It's as if she filmed the unboxing and then filmed the damaging of the bag. And then she kind of combined them together, but you don't know when what happened. And then there's a third part of the video, the resolution. So it's, so actually, Mel, you could have made three videos out of one. Would have brought in even more views. Maybe an idea for next time. But okay, you put it all in one, unbox the, the, the bag, and then she said, oh, yeah, guys. And then I went with my daughter. I was wearing jeggings, really dark denim blue, and the bag is super light, as you guys can see. She wore it crossbody on the chain, and it was kind of, you know, rubbing off of her uh, jeggings. And she came home, didn't really look at the bag, didn't really realize, because it's a light bag, that there was color transfer, that the jeggings rubbed off on the bag. And she said, yeah, I didn't, you know, the, the bag was soaking in the color and it was absorbing the color all night because I took the bag off, didn't really inspect it. I should have, but I didn't. And I put it back on, on, on the shelf. And uh, the, then the bag was absorbing the color even more because the, I didn't notice it didn't clean it immediately and then the next day or so uh she says the next day or something like yeah I think the next day she noticed the color transfer and she was devastated as one would be as as one should be and then she said ah I didn't know what to do and then she mentioned this uh, one I think lady that she knows that is close to her anyway in Australia where she, uh, who she contacted for kind of trying to, you know, send the bag off to her for repairs or for washing or cleaning. At that point, I was thinking to myself, okay, are you plugging sponsorship here? Then she said, no, this is not sponsorship. Um, uh, I... I'm going to give you a coupon code from this lady, uh, which is not an affiliate code because I don't earn any money if I... If you, you know, use my name, my code to get a reduction from your cleaning or leather surgeon type of style of um, services that this brand offers. Uh, so it's not an affiliate link. I'm not earning any money off of this. But she explained that the bag was treated for free for her. And I'm like, well, that is a sponsorship, Mel. If, if they 
did this service for you for free and they know that you're going to shout them out in your video. So that's probably the reason why they did do the spa or the service, the cleaning service for free to begin with. So stating that you ha that that it's not sponsored, it's kind of not true. It's a little bit deceitful or but anyway, okay. So she said she got it she was honest about saying that the bag was repaired for free and she got it back clean. Now some people were uh in the comments were talking about well, you know, bring it back to Chanel and this and that. I got to tell you, Mel did did this right. Um so this is by the way <laughs> This is just a rendition of, this is not how the color transfer happened on the bag. Okay, this is just a dramatization. This is just a dramatization of what had happened to the, the bag wasn't colored like this. This is just a dramatization for now, okay, for this video. So don't think that that's how her bag looked like. Just to be very clear about this, I know that by the time you get to this part of the video, a lot of you in the comments would have written, oh my God, the bag was damaged in the front. No, just silly dramatization for this purpose of entertainment the extra layer was added in the front just to clarify the color transfer however happened in the back of the bag obvi because that's what's rubbing against the jeggings she did show close-ups of the image of the bag with the color transfer on it but i um i did not um really um so, okay, this is the before. So she did show the color transfer um, on the back of the bag happening, like what the close up of what happened on the back of the bag. Now, honestly, I couldn't really, I was like pausing the video and looking at it and trying to figure out, wait, what is going on? I can't really see where the color transfer happened. But then again, it was the photos were taken in kind of relatively high light. So, it's already a bag that has blue hues in it. This type of beige, peachy tones. There is a bit of blue in there as well. So when you rub off blue on blue, it kind of transfers as shading, like a shade, rather than really stains of patches of color. So that, that's what happened. Now, however, this particular image here shows us the bag after the repair. But again, it's just the front of the bag. It doesn't mean anything. So, okay, Mel, thank you. Okay. All right. So it doesn't mean anything. The repair of the bag happened in the back of the bag, not in the front. So um, this is the point. The color transfer can sometimes be very shady rather than patchy. And Mel did a good thing. She did the right thing to not send it off to Chanel as a lot of people in the comments kind of suggested that she should have done, because Chanel doesn't cover that. Chanel covers flaws and mistakes that happen in production. If a bag is faulty, if it's sold to you faulty and it's their fault, then the five-year warranty protects you. If you get color transfer on your bag because of a mistake you made, they're not going to fix that. That's your mistake, not their mistake. Now depending on the relationship you have with your sales associate, they could be more or less willing to do something for you. They don't have to though. And it's a risk that is not always worth taking because you don't want to seem a complicated customer. You just bought the bag a week ago. You're already coming back. You use it improperly. Now you got color transfer on it. I mean, it's kind of up to you because they also state with the booklet that they give you when you purchase a bag, there's a booklet that explains the different types of leathers and it states also for lighter colored bags, whether they be letters, uh, leather bags or bags in fabrics, uh, they say color transfer may occur. Be very careful with your bags. Do not wear them with darker colored clothes. Always wear your bags with light, with like colored clothes or lighter especially not chemically overly dyed, oversaturated pigmentation of clothes, because it can rub off on your back. So Chanel warns you. They give you a booklet in which they warn you very specifically to not do certain things. So if you still do certain things and get color transfer, they're safe because they gave you literally all the paperwork they needed to give you to tell you, hey, you can get color transfer. And if you do, it's on you, boo-boo. So uh, melded Right. She did good because she's not supposed to go to Chanel with this. You could, 
but you know, it's, it's kind of annoying. Then you get also classified as a complicated customer because you're obviously doing something you shouldn't have been doing. So she did good to find a good leather person who deals with the bags. And that person managed to completely uh, fix the bag. She was very happy with the result. She was very happy that the color transfer was gone. It looked spick and span new. I repeat, I did not see on the photos the color transfer when she showed the photos of the bag with the color transfer before she sent it off for repairs. But ultimately, the good thing is that the bag is healthy. She says the bag looks great. She's super happy with the service. She shared the information of that lady who, has, who does these services of cleaning up the bags or repainting the bags. I don't know what happened to the bag, if the bag was repainted or if it was cleaned. If it was cleaned, with which chemical, chemicals it was cleaned, this we do not know. However, Mel concludes the video by saying she was very happy with the results. So it's a very fascinating structured video where we have the unboxing, the damage that happens filmed in a separate video, the process of getting it cleaned and getting it back again, an another type of video and then the conclusion ending her video by saying now the bag is back and all is good so it's a produced video it's a video that has that that took well if you're waiting for the bag to get repaired sent back to you you filmed the unboxing you wore the bag i mean it could have been a span of maybe two two weeks of producing this video fascinating and the conclusion of it all is that oh there's potential for resale value here. So I guess all I want to say in this video in particular, and the focus in this video is on the fact that Mel did good. You did good, Mel. The only thing I would leave out is mentioning the resale value of these bags. That's all. So what do you got to say, guys, in the chats? Um, Oh, Jack says, or perhaps the color transfer didn't happen at all. Maybe it was a little bit constructed, but then why promote this other business? <gasps> Maybe the business belongs to her secretly. No, that would be way too conspiracy theory, even for me. Deb says, baby wipe cleanup. Yeah, some people say that helps. I still would be too scared to use baby wipes on my bag, to be honest with you, because even though they say, oh, there's no chemicals, there still are chemicals on there. Oh, KDF says, I think she created drama. Oh, you think? Suzy Q says, stop buying bags you can't afford. Oh my God, Suzy Q. Uh, Stephanie says, yeah, same. Orianti says, I couldn't see any color transfer. Oh, you, uh, yeah, okay, so I'm not alone on this. I could not see it in the photos. But then again, she's very specific with her colors and colorways. Maybe she really saw it and you know what I mean? Like... I don't know. Jack says, or perhaps it didn't happen at all. Yeah. My CC88 says, if it was repainted, she will find it hard to resell considering it's such a new bag. But she did kind of mention more that she's jumping on the wagon of the minis because those have the really resale value uh, going for them. Rectangular and squares. Let's see what the new unboxings will bring. Leslie Craven says, I saw the color transfer in the stitching, not on the leather. Yeah, and the stitching, it also seemed like a blue hue or a shadow, especially at the corners of like where the stitch would enter into the leather. That's where I also saw it a little bit. But it looked like a shadow almost. Daniel says, I have a white bag and I wear it crossbody and so far all is well, but I am not wearing with new dark clothes. Kate asks, did she use Windex? Oh my God, you guys. Um... Gwen Lee says, or some people use some sort of non-alcohol wipe. Yeah, I've heard of that. But uh, again, I would really want to know if if the bag really went to that place uh, where that lady kind of repairs the bags. Like, how did it, like, what chemical did, did she use? How did she treat the bag? Oh, no. Stephanie says, sorry, Mel, you have no more credibility left with me. Jesus says, she cleaned it with... With spit for her? Is that a product or are you throwing shade? <laughs> Gwen says, I think it was cleaned with a paper towel. KDF says, but I don't get all the drama. Uh, Stephanie says, I think she did this on purpose. Huh. Nikki R says, good job, Mel. Jack says, yeah, the color transfer was either very, very light or didn't pick up on camera. 
Yes, but no, says, color transfer is hardly news. She's fast becoming a nuisance to luxury houses. Stephanie says, but it's why I just chose, or, or sorry, but it's why I just choose to buy bags in blues, blacks, and grays. Jesus says, another satisfied customer. KDF says, the pinks are very delicate. Pinks are super delicate. I agree with you. KDF says, gray caviar holds up okay. Daniel says, if you want to wear a light bag with dark clothes, you have to carry it away from your body. I agree. I mean, do we think she actually read that booklet, though? Asks Jack. My question is, did she actually get the booklet? Was the bag bought in a boutique or was it pre-loved? Uh, Stephanie says, I don't know. I'm just suspicious of any issues from her side at this point. KDF says, that color always color transfers regardless of the brand. Tom says, oh no, that's a different comment. Uh, Daniel says, if you do want to wear a light bag with dark clothes, you have to carry it well, well away from your body. I already read that comment. <laughs> Stephanie says, knowing her, she did this purposefully to do a video on it. Hmm. Lori says, so over anything to do with her, so over anything to do with her and others like her. Oh my God, you guys, you really are not in the mood, huh? Holly says, some fashion houses offer free cleaning, but is this not common fashion sense? Right. But it's interesting how, okay, well, I don't know. I, I, I think you're all being very, very tough towards Mel. I don't think that she deserves this. Lie to me 101 says, this was a rookie mistake. You should know about color transfer. No wonder the journey ain't working, says KDF. Doesn't know luxury at all. I mean, hmm. Donnie says she's shady rather than patchy. KDF says she has no clue what she's assessing. Huh. Suzy Q says also, I couldn't see any color transfer on the bag. Maybe I missed it when I watched it. I also couldn't see it, uh, honestly. I mean, a little bit on the stitches, yeah. But, yeah. Um, kind of difficult. Okay, well, this is interesting to see. The overall mood is kind of very... Hmm. Yeah, Jack says, we a tough crowd tonight. Yeah, Jana says, I'm suspicious. I feel like it was a paid ad for the person who cleaned the bag. <sighs> That's the vibe it gave off to me as well, but... Mo Hart says, It depends on the type of dye that caused the damage. In most color transfer cases, a damp microfiber cloth with some light duty leather cleaning spray will do the trick regardless of leather color. Yeah, Stephanie also agrees. Yeah, we are particularly harsh with Mel today. Why are you so harsh, you guys? Uh, Sue Reynolds says, Chanel Boutique will tell you uh, that as the body warms up, the color transfer can occur even with well-washed and worn clothing. Um, Holy Grace says, I have pink and white bags, but I am very, very careful. You gotta be, I mean, with white in particular. Oh, I saw a lady the other day in, um, in a beautiful shopping center she was in her 80s or maybe even older all dressed in white had like these chunky white gold um these chunky gold earrings one gold necklace sunglasses like 70s sunglasses on rings for days and a white chanel timeless classic double flap with gold hardware Decadanza, darling. I felt like she flew in a time capsule from the 80s. And mind you, everything impeccably white. The, Chanel, the white Chanel bag, lambskin leather white with gold hardware. To die for. Not a single stain on it. Clean as clean as white can be. With the gold hardware. <gasps> and the gold jewelry and the white cloth. Oh my gosh, she was... I was living for that moment, I swear to God. I, you know, Chanel bags don't impress me anymore. I mean, you know, the double flaps, the timeless classics, we've seen it all. But a white lambskin leather with gold hardware on an elderly lady that is completely pulled together with the gold jewelry and the white clothing, and she just... And I was like, oh, 
This is giving me Dynasty vibes, Dallas. I mean, it was everything. It was a dream come true from the 80s. Catapulted in 2021. That's what I want to be when I turn. If I make it to that age, I want to walk around. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of starting to dream of a white lambskin Chanel double flap with gold hardware, which is like suicidal for me. It would it would turn black in a day. Sweet face Lola says, how are people not wearing good denim that doesn't transfer? Uh, if you can afford a high end handbag, you should wear high priced jeans. Again, I wasn't buying the transfer. It was an ad. Let's be honest. Gwen Lee says, is the new caviar small in size more durable? Yeah, caviar is more durable when it comes to certain depends how you use the bag but long term lambskin is more durable orange peel says i didn't think it was it was that big of a deal yeah may says i have always wanted a white chanel lambskin but i don't trust myself and it's the never-ending saga with Chanel. Do we? Do we not? Sherry Darling says, I'm saving the white double flap for my wedding someday. First, I need to find a partner, lol. But it's not that easy. Chanel doesn't always make white lambskin uh, double flaps, timeless classics with gold hardware. You gotta wait years and years for them to kind of bring them back again. They're not in rotation all the time. Yes, but no says, a day of chic with a white Chanel. I know it's to die for. And my CC88 says, thanks you, thank you for your input, Jacob. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thumb it up, subscribe to my channel, follow me on my social medias. Super Jacob all spelled together on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can follow me on my Chanel Instagram profile, one dedicated to my Chanel collection called Coco Chanel is in my house. All spelled together, and the other one called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to the life of Coco Chanel. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Subscribe. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.